Hello and welcome to the latest episode of the Boardmasters with me, Chris Mullins, and tonight I am going to be unboxing the second of my clutch of three Kickstarters to arrive just after Christmas, and that is Lizard Wizard by Forbidden Games. I will be looking at the premium components as well, but just for the minute I'm going to move that out of the way. And, well, first thing to say is obviously the artwork on this is absolutely gorgeous. It's all about a magical world where you are recruiting dragons and building towers and learning spells, crafting reagents and everything. I mean, I'll just get the plastic off. Even the artwork on the top of the box with the fox is absolutely gorgeous because you're recruiting familiars for your uh, wizards and everything. But yeah, it's a game I had an interesting history with because I, I think I backed it during the campaign, then I cancelled it, then I backed it again, then I cancelled it again, and then I late pledged it because in the end I just couldn't resist it. It's absolutely stunning. Okay, and so we've got these enchantment tokens and things that give you bonuses. I'm not sure. Oh, these are achievements. Okay, so obviously that's going to give you bonuses provided you achieve those. We've got the standard tokens. I'm going to think these are the mana and your familiars, I think. I would imagine most of these are going to be replaced in the premium components. There's a good indication of what you will get in the box if you back the retail version. These are all the reagents and things that you can uh, purchase and discover in order to make your spells and potions because there is a, an auction mechanic in the game, which is why I will probably be holding the gameplay video off on this one until Chris and Chris are free so that we can play it as a three player because I think any game like Tinner's Trail, when you have three players rather than two, it just makes the auctions that bit more dynamic and interesting. And then we've got the player cards so you can hide obviously your things from the other player because it is a competitive game and it just highlights the different schools of wizardry and magic that we've got in the game. Thaumaturgy, Thaumaturgy, I'm not sure on the pronunciation of that one. Druidry, Sorcery, Necromancy, Alchemy, Conjuring, and finally Enchantment. But again, everything just comes with very, very beautiful artwork. It's like an associated uh, familiar with each school of magic as well. This board here, which is nicely dual layered, uh, is the sort of, it's not an auction, but it's a market mechanic. So the value of your reagents is going to increase as you collect more of them. And it's that gauging at what point do you want to sell them? Because as soon as you, someone sells it, then the, the market sort of crashes to an extent. So the, the value of things drops. So it's that, that risk fee reward, you know, I've got loads of sulfur and the value is quite high. But I want to, do I want to hold on and try and get the value higher? Or do I know that another player has got a decent amount of sulfur and I want to sell it and crash the price before they do it to me? And, you know, that's sort of calling out people's bluff. And then I'm guessing this will be the main player board. Yeah, so again, very, very attractive. So you've got your sections on building towers, recruiting various wizards going into the dungeon, where you can get treasure and things, summon your familiars, and research your spells. So again, lots of good stuff going on there. Lots of beautiful artwork, lots of things to think about. And a surprisingly small stature-wise rulebook, to be honest. Uh, but we have the flavour text, Welcome to Astoria. Astoria is a land pulsing with magic and intrigue. A handful of archmages are vying for the loyalty of wizards across the land so that they can wield ultimate power. While competing to recruit wizards from seven unique schools of magic, you will also have to create mystical towers, research powerful spells, summon helpful familiars, and search dark dungeons for gold and items of power. Now, the one thing I am really hoping in the game is that the seven schools of magic aren't just cosmetic as such, where you actually get rewarded necessarily for focusing on a particular school rather than, oh, I'll get that dragon, that necromancy dragon because it looks cool and then I'll get the conjuring one and then I'll get the druidry one. I would hope that 
like any benefit you get from recruiting a wizard of a certain school that that's sort of multiplied the more wizards you get from that so then you've got to weigh up do i really want to specialize do i want to you know jack of all trades that sort of thing and i'm really really hoping that's going to translate to the gameplay they do have some optional rules uh, some players do not enjoy gotcha type interactions to play a game where this is minimized before play remove all spell cards with the star icon Okay, I'm not a huge fan of gotcha mechanics, but where it's thematically relevant, like with spells and things, then and it makes sense, I've got no problem with that, and I'm sure we'll be playing it with those. A very substantial score sheet, so, I mean, hopefully I'll get anywhere near this number of plays in. <laughs> That's very ambitious. Let's have a look to see what we have got in these... Right, so obviously these are going to be for organising your components and everything. Very cool looking. Look like they will do the job really, really well. We've got the glow in the dark summoner stones. I don't know if I'm going to be able to see that. No, probably not. And probably never will because I don't imagine I'll ever play the game in the dark. But they do look pretty cool nonetheless. Okay, we got the ultra deluxe first player marker. I don't think I've ever seen a more substantial first player marker in my life. Look at the size of that thing. I mean, usually I, I don't really care for the first player markers because they don't really make a difference, but that is such a sizable thing that is actually quite appealing to get hold of that because it's going to be quite impressive to show off. Let's have a look. What do we have here? I'm guessing these are the spell cards. I so certainly recognise some of the iconography from the rule book there. I always see these card packs with the, the tape around and think they're going to be easier to open. I still struggle relentlessly with them. Okay, so lots of different ones. Look at the tower decks, get them for free. Free wizards. Undead don't hit, they give you gold instead. Giants don't hit. I'm assuming this is for dungeon exploration, some of these. Cheaper tower building, summon familiars for fewer magic, wizard cards equal extra victory points. And there, as you can see, is an enormous pile of spell cards. Destroy another player's out of play tower. Take a wizard card from another player. Protective spells. That is an enormous wedge of spell cards. Which is obviously, I mean, it's going to take as many plays as there are in that score sheet to get to see all of those, I imagine. That is a huge amount. And again, just going to add to the uh, replayability and the variations in the game. And then what do we have in here? These are the reagent cards. Is this a whole deck? So again, massive pile of reagent cards. So you can choose... I believe, I believe it's a choice to either gather certain reagents or increase the value of other ones. So it's always that sort of balancing act, as I mentioned earlier, between gathering the resources, increasing the value of the resources that you have in order to try and maximise your profit. And I keep dropping them. Just as I do when I'm shuffling, because despite the fact I've been doing this solidly all year, I still can't seem to not drop cards all the time. Oh wow, that beast man looks incredibly cool. That's some evil goat. Centaur. Oh, that is not generally what you associate the look of a fairy. Infamous gelatinous cube. A knoll, a minotaur, satyr, witch. After each trip to the dungeon is complete, add one forest creature card to the dungeon deck and shuffle. This means that the dungeon gets a little bit harder each time a player goes there. That's cool. And they look absolutely, I'm not going to say, I don't know if I can say stunning, but the artwork is incredible. And I love the art style of it. They have really made an effort there to sort of go non-traditional with the, the designs of the monsters. And I really do appreciate that. 
Because obviously being in this hobby, you do see your fair share of trolls and goblins and gremlins and a lot of the time they can look pretty much the same. Oh, we got, and then we've got lots of other dungeon cards. That, I mean, that's very different to a kobold in Too Many Bones, which is generally very lizard-like, and that one's rats. And again, they've just done a really great job of trying to make <laughs> the giant uh, crammed into a tunnel. Very, very different and unique. There is a lot of enemies in this dungeon. I'm not liking the look of... Oh, Medusa does not look happy. Oh, but we're getting to the treasure. I like the look of the treasure. Here we go. Makes that dungeon dive worthwhile. I mean, that mass makes me think of Crash Bandicoot, so I'm definitely going to want that. <laughs> Hopefully it makes you immune when you get hold of it. And then lots and lots of gold cards, because we all want to find a treasure hoard when we go dungeon diving, after all. It's a trap! We don't like traps. Certainly not. And then we have got the tower cards, and I believe there's some wizard ones in here too. I think this is where the, the artwork really shines as well. You'll have to forgive me, I can't remember the name of the artist they got to work on this, and it's she's not on the box, but she's very, very talented indeed. And again, I hope the, the towers are not purely cosmetic, because as you can see, they're, they're linked to particular schools of wizardry so you've got your alchemy tower your necromancy tower your conjuring tower and again i hope that just complements the wizards that you're getting and it's not just oh well i've got the necromancy tower but it makes no difference when i play the game i hope it's a necromancy tower that gives you significant bonuses if you're then recruiting necromancy wizards and again the artwork is just Absolutely gorgeous. Very, very unique dragon designs that I haven't seen anything really like them in anything else that I've played so far. And they're all have their own specific reagents as well. So again, hopefully that's just gonna help individualize the different schools of magic that we have in here. And I'm assuming this is gonna be our familiars given that we haven't met any of these yet. And, you know, I've said it a few times already, these are another aspect of the game that is linked specifically to different schools of wizardry. So hopefully we'll have that link and benefit by getting them. I mean, I'm slightly disappointed, if I'm honest, that there's, what, one, two, three, four, five familiar cards for each school and it's the same familiar on each one. Uh, I mean, as these mana costs go up, you would hope they would maybe almost like a Pokemon evolve and the, on the stronger cards and look a bit different, but sadly not. That's probably the one area of the artwork that has let me down a bit there. Then we've got, obviously, the another excellent insert at the bottom. So let's get into the Deluxe Components. Ooh, surprisingly heavy for a small box, but then anything that is packed full of metal coins is going to be. And, you know, credit to them. I think they've gone above and beyond with the artwork on this one as well. It's obviously just a box for storing components that I assume you can translate into the main box once you've opened it. And so this box will almost never come out again. But, I mean, that artwork is very, very attractive. And now I just... Got to get it open. Oh. Okay. I love a good metal coin. Oh, and nice blue ones. It's the first time I've had any of that colour. They're not as substantial as, say, the ones in Dinosaur World recently that we had. But they feel very different. Love the hole in the middle. Very unique design. And they feel really nice. They do feel important as such even though they are obviously completely essential more of the same but smaller so obviously a smaller currency and we've got these player boards which are very substantial in size so you've got your areas for your spells your reagents your towers your wizards and your familiars 
And then we've got the wooden reagent tokens that replace the cardboard ones that we obviously saw in the box. So we've got all our different reagents to find. And then we have more metal coins. I, I missed those. Okay, so we've seen the ones and the tens, and then we've got the fives going up to the twenties. So these are the mana coins. And then we've got the big golden coins. We've got even more mana coins there. We've got a big hundred. So again, nice and light. They don't feel too weighty and uncomfortable. These do feel a bit more substantial. So I can get in there. Oh, the art, the design on those is very, very cool indeed. Yeah, so they've got the familiars on the back. I hope it's, is it all the foxes or is it a mixture? Let's see if we can get foxes. No, they do have a mixture, which is cool. All the different, I guess, maybe different uh, familiar for each different currency, for each denomination, should I say. And again, not too heavy, which is nice, but they do feel great in the hand. And I like the curved edges. So that is a very quick look at the premium components that you get from the Kickstarter. And I am absolutely thrilled with everything on show here. Again, mixed history with the game that I backed it. I didn't, will I, won't I, who knows? And then obviously in the end, I couldn't resist because it is, as you can see, an absolutely beautiful game. And I can't wait to get it to the table. It's queued up though behind, uh, well, at, at the time of recording, we, we've got Nemesis on the go, then Into Deep next, then this. So hopefully we'll get round to it February time. And then who knows what's going to come. We might, we might be approaching Return to Dark Tower territory by then. But we shall see. But that is everything that is in Lizard Wizard in the deluxe Kickstarter edition. So hopefully you enjoyed having a look at that with me and I'll see you again soon. So thank you for watching. Look after yourself, stay safe and have a good one. Bye bye now.